It has been a while since we have been able to produce a Water Resources Outlook, so we have a lot to cover today. Let's get started with Jeff looking at some precipitation information for the early part of the winter. Jeff? So how wet has it been this fall and winter? Back in the early fall, we talked about the El Nino and the wet weather to come. So now let's look back and look at how wet we have been since late fall. And we see here the precipitation rankings for each climate division for the three-month period from November 2015 to January 2016. The data shows us that it was a very wet November to January, especially from North Georgia up through the I-85 corridor, corridor to Charlotte, North Carolina. It was a record wettest looking at the 120-year record. Also record wettest there in South Florida. This uh, record wet weather is also seen in other parts of the country. In fact, for the contiguous United States, this is the record wettest November through January, looking back at the 120-year record, surpassing the old record set back in 1973 and 74. For the southeast, the November to January period was the second wettest. So overall, this gives you a perspective that this past late fall and early winter was very wet, especially around the holiday period. This was also a period of flooding for many areas of the southeast. So with Jeff looking at the early part of winter and how wet it was, I'm going to show you what normal rainfall looks like in the southeast, and this is since the beginning of the year, January 1st. With 15 to 20 inch totals along the Gulf Coast and up in the mountains, we really do expect a lot of rain from January through March. Not so much in the Florida Peninsula. However, here's what we got during that time. And while we still received some pretty heavy rain at times that caused flooding this winter, it could have been much worse. Above normal rainfall in South Florida and along the North Carolina coast, and then just a small area that pushed into central Alabama, Normal to below normal rain for, fell for the rest of the southeast. Jeff will talk about the drought monitor in a moment to show what kind of impact the below normal rain has had in the area shown. And really, there has not been much deterioration into drought this winter. However, in the last 30 days, the relative dryness over the southeast has been a blessing. However, we need to be very careful as we move through the spring to watch for signs of drought as we get closer to summer. Jeff will chat about our near-term meteorology later in that look, but now he's going to show some specific points in the Southeast RFC area and their accumulation of rainfall through the winter. So Todd has talked about the period since the beginning of the year and we see we really have come back to near normal with the recent drier weather here in March. When we look at a couple of individual cities, and I talked about the record wet weather from Atlanta and Charlotte in November through January. So let's look at that here. This is the accumulated precipitation for Atlanta since November 1st. And we see that we, really, uh, we were really wet here in early November and also late December. And then consistently wet uh, from there January and February with very little rain in March. But overall, uh, enough precipitation for, uh, to make for record precipitation for this period. Looking at Charlotte, we see much of the same as Atlanta, and again, enough rain with short enough breaks to see record totals for this specific period, even with March being very dry. So a perspective of just how wet it has been for the period November to January. So how have stream flows fared? Uh, looking at the 28-day averages, which gives us a good perspective of overall water resources, we see most gauges in the normal range for most of the southeast. We were above normal for, month, for months going from uh, late fall and early winter, but as we leave winter and now into spring, we see stream flows back to normal as a result of the drier weather for most of March in the region. And with stream flows near normal and coming out of a very wet winter, we see no drought conditions and just some areas under the abnormally dry D0 category. Uh, we actually have not seen drought since early November in the southeast. And can you believe it, Todd, we have not seen any extreme drought for over three years now in the southeast. That is hard to believe, Jeff. So now, where do we stand now with respect to the current El Nino? I've borrowed some slides from our friends at the Climate Prediction Center. And from these slides, we show that the current El Nino looks to be weakening. The key indicator area in the Pacific Ocean is the Nino 3.4 region, a large area from the center and a good ways east, um, not far from the coast of South America. 
The departure from normal in the Nino 3.4 region is decreasing. Our peak was somewhere in the vicinity of the November to December time frame. And where are we historically with the 2016 El Nino? Here are the rankings of the El Nino episodes since 1950. The 2016 El Nino ranks as the strongest since 1950, with the 1998 and 1983 being a close second and third. And while we haven't seen the relentless rain over the Southeast RFC area that we saw back in 1998, as Jeff has shown, in many areas this winter, we have been very wet, in some cases record wet and very few have escaped without being impacted by some flooding. Here's a quick comparison of the 1998 versus 2016 El Nino. Here's a snapshot of the anomalies in each year and then a graphic showing the difference from the same time back then. As you can see, the 2016 year is very similar to the 1998 year, with it being a little warmer closer to Australia and a little cooler as you approach the South American coast. I will talk about the outlook because of the El Nino in a little, but first, Jeff is going to talk about the short and medium term weather. So taking a look at the weather patterns across the country, we see today the jet stream is well to the north, bringing warm and dry weather today, but our next weather system is just off to the east there. That storm system is in the four corners in the associated cold front there in the middle of the country. will shift east, and by Thursday and Friday, bringing rain and storms, possibly even some severe storms, to many areas in the southeast. Doesn't look like any river flooding from this rain, but maybe some heavy downpours. Uh, this should be the first good rainfall in several days for many areas of the southeast, which will be good to wash some of that pollen out of the air and trees that has been bothering so many of us. And then I think we get a break for a day, possibly, and then we will see some southern stream energy and moisture begin to spread in on Sunday and Monday. This will bring uh, rainfall and storms back to the region again. And then maybe another short break for a day with another shot of moisture coming in from the equatorial Pacific by midweek. As you can see here, that, that southern stream jet nosing back into the region. So the gist of it, Todd, is that it looks like we may be going back into some wetter weather here. And this is also supported by the Climate Prediction Center 6 to 10 day outlook showing above average rainfall for most of the southeast as well as the 8 to 14 day outlook uh, also showing above average rainfall being most likely especially there in South Georgia and northern Florida Peninsula. So the forecast for ENSO or El Nino or La Nina is showing ocean temperatures cooling as we approach the middle of the summer and then it looks as though we could go into a La Nina or even stay neutral for a good part of the summer and fall. How will that affect our weather near and long term? In the seasonal forecast from April through June, we are forecasting a small chance for above normal rainfall. The confidence level of that forecast is not as strong as what we had shown earlier this winter. However, models do lean towards wetter than normal in that time frame. As for rainfall predictions after that, I made the decision not to show any of the graphics through the rest of the summer and through the fall because they show equal chances of above, below, and normal rainfall for that time period. With the declining El Nino and neutral conditions likely, normal seems most appropriate. We don't have any change to that until we get to the winter forecast, but we still have plenty of time to talk about that between now and then. So the bottom line in the short term, looks like we might be a bit more active in the last couple of weeks of March. Maybe a wet end to the break we have seen from the recent weather. As I mentioned before, we've been a little bit drier than normal over much of the southeast and, um, and some wet weather at the end of this, of this, this month and maybe in the early April um, could give us that little bit of rain that we need to maybe bring things back to normal as we head into spring. As for the long term, summer looks like normal rain. It does look like a bit on the warm side. I didn't show that in our extended, but it does look like um, a bit warmer than normal through the summer. If you have any questions, um, please contact um, either me or Jeffrey Dober, and our email addresses are shown below. And thank you for listening to March's Water Resources Outlook.